Case of meeting to order. Please rise for the moment of silence, Mr. Grady. All right. This being my last invocation, I just wanted to say in the last month we have seen some devastation from storms and also a horrific act of violence. But we have seen good come from these events. It brings acts of kindness when people are in need. I ask that we keep these affected by the storms and acts of violence in our prayers. I, I also ask you to keep the faith with a new board coming on soon. Many hard decisions they will have concerning our public schools. But like I have seen in the past years, we have come together, putting what is good and right for our students first. This can happen with the new administration in place and the great teachers I have seen over the years. Pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Couple smirk. Thank you, Mr. Grady. In the event of a fire and emergency, emergency exits are located to the rear of the chamber and also down the stairs out to the left and into the parking lot. Can I have roll call, please? Mr. Grady? Here. Mr. Renier? Here. Mrs. Riley? Here. Mrs. Ungeyer? Mr. Cruzel? Here. Mrs. LeBlanc? Mr. Neville? Mrs. Thurston? Here. Chairman Serrard? Here. Let the record show that Ms. LeBlanc is celebrating her son's birthday. Mr. Neville had a family engagement that he couldn't get out of, and Ms. Ungeyer is out traveling. Board guests. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have board guests this evening. Uh, tonight we're going to welcome our athletic director, Corey O'Connell, and field high school teacher and cross-country coach Rob Barnes, and JFK middle school teacher and assistant cross-country coach Leanne Serpovich. I hope I said that correctly. Um, they're here to introduce a very special student from the cross country team and at this point I'd ask Mr. O'Connell and the coaches to come up and I won't give away the surprise. Thank you Mr. Dresick. Um, tonight uh, I'm talking on behalf of Antonios. Um, we preach sportsmanship at obviously through our athletic program. And tonight is a great example of what this young man did during uh, track meet a few weeks ago. I'll let Coach Barnes and Coach uh, Serpovich uh, des describe that situation. Uh, Rob Barnes, the uh, head coach cross country and my assistant, Leanne Sh uh, Sharapovich. I haven't gotten it right yet. Uh, <laughs> son. Um, so on uh, September 20, September 26, um, we had a home meet versus Hall High School. And a really hot day. Hall brought four buses of kids, and there must have been over 100 boys running the, ro uh, the race. Um, I was at the scorer's table, and uh, it's the first meet at home of the year. And, and, I, and I'm at the scorer's table, and I get a call, uh, and, and it's Coach C, and she's up at the mile marker, and she says there's a runner down for Hall High School. And at that point, I turned to a bunch of Hall boys that weren't running. And I said, hey, uh, guys, you need to go get your coach and tell them, tell them that you have a, you have a runner down. Um, at which point, they were arguing about who was going to go get the coach. And uh, eventually, one of them went off to get the coach. And uh, I started, I finished the boys' race. I started the girls' race. And about halfway through the girls' race, and I see Antonio's coming across the finish line. And I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> so. Um, I, and, and I later found out uh, what unfolded. So, Coach, you can share a little bit about what happened. Okay, so um, first of all, I just want to say I'm, I'm very proud to be here on behalf of Antonio's. Um, he's just such a wonderful, wonderful kid. I've known him since sixth grade. And um, Every time I see him, he's just friendly, wonderful kid. So I, I guess this does not surprise me in the least to, um, for you to hear what he has done. Um, so we had a lot of runners that day, and it was a very hot day. And the runner in front of Antonio was, went down, um, and pretty dramatically. So it wasn't just like a trip and a fall. So he was very concerned. I didn't, wasn't aware of any of this. Um, but he stopped and asked the, uh, the boy a lot of questions, see if he could do anything, and tried to, you know, figure out what the situation was, immediately stopped his race. And I have to tell you, when we're running, a lot of people 
are running and seeing this. So many people could have stopped, including many of the Hall athletes, but they just kept running and running and running. This fellow right here stops his own race, runs all the way back to the mile marker, which is a good mile from where he was to get me. Um, pretty frantic, telling me the situation though, calm, this is what's happening, he's down, I tried to talk to him. He's not responding, et cetera. Really concerned. Um, so I said, look, you gotta run down a coach and tell him just in case he doesn't pick up his phone. No problem. He runs down, takes off, and I'm on my phone, 911, running down to the boy who was clearly in distress. So ambulances are coming, and they eventually took him to the hospital. Um, but um, Antonio went down, told coach, came back up, and ran the rest of the race to complete his race that day. But I, I just, I'm very proud of him. So we thought that we would share that with all of you so you could hear the story. Um, today I received, I believe Mr. Drezik has it, um, two emails. I mean, Coach Barnes actually forwarded them to me. Um, one from the athlete that collapsed and one from the mother. Um, it's, they're pretty, the one from the son is pretty funny. It, hey, Antonio, so I really have no clue who you are and didn't know your name until around two minutes before writing this, but I just wanted to genuinely thank you for helping me out at the meet when I fainted. It must have taken a lot to want to run all the way back to my coach and then, real, uh, and then run the entirety of the race 20 plus minutes after everyone else. I hope you're properly recognized for this. And above all, I just want to tell you what you did was good and I'm truly thankful for it. And the mothers, um, hi, Coach Barnes. I'm Ari Bletchner's mom. And yes, Antonios went way above and beyond to help Ari during that race a few weeks ago. His actions showed a wonderful combination of kindness, selflessness, and maturity, along with the drive to finish the race, even though he was way behind. Wow, shows such a character. Thank you doesn't feel like enough. Ari wanted to share his appreciation, too, so I attached a note from Antonios. I, we would also like to thank him a gift card to thank him too. If you think that is acceptable and appropriate, we can arrange this. Um, thank you again for your time and for your efforts. Um, on behalf of the Enfield Athletic Department, we, Antonios, we, we got you a little plaque. Um, and it says, Antonios, um, Enfield High School recognizes Antonios Potatos for demonstrating sincere commitment to the highest ideals and objectives of sportsmanship during a cross country meet versus Hall High School 2017. Antonio, on behalf of the entire Board of Education, I want to tell you how immensely proud we all are of you. Um, you're going to go very, very far, and you're going to command a lot of respect from a lot of different people. And, and kudos to you, guy. Kudos. That, that, that was just awesome. I'm very proud of you. All of us are very proud of you. Anything else? Superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just want to thank Antonio. Says, oh, you know, you can leave. It's okay. <laughs> I know. So I asked if he wanted to speak. I said he's done enough. He doesn't have to speak in front of everybody. But on behalf of the entire school system, we can tell you how proud we are of Antonio and, and the, the sportsmanship he displayed. And Mr. O'Connell let me know of that. We, we immediately tried to get him on. And just so you know, he actually came from a meet right now to be here on time. So he's probably still out of breath. So we'll let him go home and, and have some dinner. So thank you again. Anyone? <laughs> We'll start with our student representatives. Both are here, so. Go ahead. Um, I know you guys have probably heard it a lot, but on, um, on behalf of the entire driving student body, thank you for lowering the prices of parking passes. <laughs> that helps us out all immensely. Um, another thing, the band competed on Saturday in Cheshire and won first place in their division. Um, and Spirit Week leading up to our homecoming weekend that Megan is going to speak about, that was very successful. It uh, you know, genuinely built a lot of excitement around the school and it, it unites everybody, so that's always good. 
And last but not least, the National Honor Society has started their application process for eligible juniors. So everyone's excited about that. Megan, go ahead. So as Matt said, homecoming was a big success. Uh, student body was very happy to bring the community and the school together at Eagle Fest. We appreciate everyone coming out to that. Tomorrow is also PSAT day for juniors and sophomores. Seniors want to wish you all luck. They weren't that hard, but it's, it's still a long day. And we are also having a pink out day in memory of Kyla Picorni and Jacob Carlander. Thank you guys. Mr. Desmond. Mr. Chairman, in your packet, <clears throat> excuse me, you find information regarding the Stowe Early Learning Center open house, which will take place on Thursday night, October 12th. Um, there will be information there from the Town of Enfield Child Development Center, Enfield Family Resource Center, and KITE as well, and there's information in your packet. Uh, also a reminder that the 17th Annual Jack-O-Lantern Festival will be held Saturday the 14th at 4 p.m. on the Enfield Town Green. All, all families in Enfield are encouraged to, to attend. This is usually a, one of the wonderful events that we have in the Town Green. So we welcome everyone. There's also information in your packet regarding this. Uh, it's also a reminder that we're having standards-based report card parents' night. Uh, that'll take place at Enfield High School for all K-5 families on Monday the 23rd at 6 p.m. And we'll also send a school messenger notification out to all families regarding this as well. And two quick things that aren't, aren't, aren't listed on my report, uh, just a quick power school update. Uh, the high school, is, as of 5 o'clock this afternoon, uh, the high school is up and running. They're completing the night. They started with the seniors and worked their way down to the junior class with getting uh, the parent porthole and everything up. That has all been completed. They're now working on the middle school with hopes that everything will be completed by the time progress reports go out for the middle school, stu middle school students. And then you'll also, as I said, with the standards-based report card night, there'll be different information for elementary school parents with regards to what they would actually see in the parent portal. Um, but everything is still on schedule. Um, I've heard from some people that are pleasantly surprised with the notifications that Power School can give for their high school students, uh, meaning that they don't always have to take their child's word for it. Now they can actually see when assignments are due and attendance and all the things that go along with that. So the feedback has been positive. I know it's been a rough stretch getting there, but we anticipated it and, and everything's on, on pace. So I'd like to again thank Mr. Barassa, Mr. Mr. Lesiak, and Dr. Wiley for all their help on that. And the last thing I want to mention, on October 20th, I was approached by one of our teachers, Mrs. Gustafson, uh, if there was anything that we can do as a district, as Mr. Grady indicated in, in his moment of silence, uh, in his convocation, um, with regards to recent world events, whether it be with devastation from storms. This obviously started with the first hurricane down in, in, uh, in Texas and then obviously followed by the subsequent storms in, in Florida and Puerto Rico and obviously the events that had taken place um, in Las Vegas in the last few weeks. And, and she had reached out to see if there was something we can do as a district to try to at least raise money or, or raise awareness. Um, so she d had done some research and, and tried to get in touch with organizations that were obviously reputable and ones that we knew the, the, the majority of the contributions would go directly to the causes. Um, and she was able to find the Big Brother Foundation. And there will be some information I'll send out to you, but I just wanted to publicly state um, so that the public can understand that I, I've endorsed on October 20th, we're going to hold a district-wide hat day or dress down day for a dollar donation, of which all proceeds are going to go to the Big Brothers Foundation on behalf of the Enfield Public Schools. Um, and that organization ensures that all of the proceeds will go to the appropriate charities to make sure the money goes directly to the people that need them. So if you do see them or if you have children, they say, I'm allowed to wear a hat on the 20th. Yes, I said that was okay. <laughs> um, but we'll send some more information on that as we go. We'll send a school messenger out, but I wanted the board to be aware. We just got the notification today that, that we, it was going to be on the 20th. And that will conclude the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Dresick. Audiences. Mr. Longy. Jennifer Mancus, come on up. Hello. Hello. State your name and record and address for the record and try to keep your comments under five minutes. Will do. So Jennifer Mancus, I am uh, at 17 Booth Road. Well, I live at 17 Booth Road here in town. And I'm here tonight as a concerned parent having um, been watching what's happening at the state level and with the governor's orders for funding and um, I'm not seeing 
uh, the veto the veto of the budget being overridden and I'm concerned about what we're going to be doing if we lose um, a significant portion of our education funding from the state. I'm sure you guys are concerned about it as well, but I, I was hoping that you might be able to share with us some magic pool of money that exists somewhere or perhaps, you know, I have no idea. I don't even, can't even begin to imagine how you make up a third of the overall budget. But I wanted, was hoping that you guys might be able to share some of your thinking. That was it. Thank you, <laughs> Any other audiences? Any other audiences? Any other audiences? Sensing none? Board member comments, Mr. Grady. I have nothing. Thank you, Mr. Grady. Mr. Rainier. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first, I just wanted to extend my uh, gratitude to Kite. Um, great event they had for their annual meeting. Um, it was nice to see a collective pool of individuals uh, for a common cause, uh, and that is early childhood education. So uh, that was a great event, and uh, great to see everything that they're doing out there for our kids. Uh, and also Eagle Fest. Um, it was awesome going out there, seeing you guys at the clubs, the sports, you know, just mixing everything into one. Um, I mean, they had Krispy Kreme donuts. I mean, how can you go wrong in an event that has Krispy Kreme donuts? Um, and, you know, it was just phenomenal. I brought my kids and they were excited. You know, it, it, it gives a, it shines a bright light on education. Where it's not just going into a class and being bored by lectures. You know, it gives kids something to look forward to, you know, getting involved with a club or getting involved with sports or, or seeing the band or seeing the cheerleaders. Um, and it just brings a great excitement to the youth in our town. So I think it was great that the, the kids at Enfield High and all the administrators that made that happen, it was a good event. So I just want to congratulate everyone who was part of that. Thank you, Mr. Rainier. Ms. Riley. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations and a really big thank you to Antonios for demonstrating to Enfield what true sportsmanship is really all about. That was an amazing story to hear. and. If that was my son that had fallen, I would be eternally grateful to him for what he did. That was really awesome. And then I didn't know the juniors were taking their PSATs tomorrow, so good luck to everybody who's taking them. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Mr. Cruzel. Uh, a couple things. I forgot to pull this up, but in the meantime, I want to thank also Kite, but I also want to thank personally Ashley Levesque, the job she's done for Kite, and, and she's moving to, moving away down to North Carolina, and she will be missed, and she's done a great job for that program, and any any and all emails that we get has her name all over it, and any any of any of the things going on and over has her name all over, all over it, and I'll bring up the other thing during the building committee, so I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Cruzo, Ms. Thurston. Okay, um, happy stuff. Jack O'Lantern Fest is always fun. It's a, it's a really good event for everybody. Um, I suggest everybody come on out. The kids work real hard on their pumpkins. Um, it's a good event, and it's one of those things that brings Enfield together. Um, I am so amazingly impressed uh, uh, <laughs> with Antonio's behavior. That's something that you usually only read in books or see in movies, and, and, and uh, I'm just, wow. So... Um, Kudos again. Um, the legislative delegation for the town of Enfield will be here next meeting. Yeah, next meeting. So they're going to have a better understanding of what's going on with the budget. Um, it is what it is. Uh, $21 million hit to the town of Enfield is pretty severe. I know that the, the, there is a budget that has holds the town's blameless. Um, I see a lot of <coughs> gamesmanship going on. I hope that um, some folks on the other side of the aisle uh, develop the intestinal fortitude to override the budget. Um, November 1st, it is what it is. We're, we volunteered for this job. We're going to continue working on it as much as we can. Um, a lot of decisions will probably be made by the next board, but we're not, we're not resting. Um, none of the decisions that we will have to make are easy. And, and you're right. How do you make up a third of your budget? You don't. You, you, you try. Um, I've never been more confident with everyone that's involved on our side of the fence, um, meaning the 
meaning the school system, that I think we'll all get through it together. I've been, never been more confident with the relationship that we have with the town council that we will help get through this together. Um, there's no easy answer. It's not fair at all. Um, but the governor is the governor. And he has the power to do what he wants to do, and he's going to do it. Um, Hartford's Hartford, Bridgeport's Bridgeport, New Haven's New Haven. And those folks have a lot of political clout. And I'll just leave it at that. So um, stay tuned. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Um, November 1st is the scary day. Hopefully they'll pull something off next week. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, but we'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through. Unfinished business, none. New business, policy revisions, approve the 9000 series. Mr. Dresick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the policy committee and Mr. Longy have been diligently working on reviewing all board policies. Uh, board members were electronically sent the 9000 series to review prior to tonight's meeting. Um, tonight, the board will approve the 9000 series in its entirety as it's been prepared by CABE. Uh, Mr. Renier, who's the policy committee chair, Mr. Longy are here. Uh, if they have any additional comments they'd like to add about the process, but at this point, I turn it over to Mr. Rainier. Thank you, Mr. Jezik. Uh, so the policy committee, um, with a lot of uh, hard hours, put into the 9000 series. Uh, if you look at your packet, um, what we did was we took a lot of the recommendations from CAPE and built it into our existing policy. Uh, some items were highly suggested, others were told they need to be in there for legality reasons. Um, and I'm not going to go through it page by page by page because really Walter, Charlotte, and myself did this. Uh, it took us about four hours. Uh, but we put together what we believe is the best policy going forward for Enfield. Uh, and that is what's before you tonight for first reading. Do I have a motion to accept the presentation that's in the packet for approval as a first reading? So moved. Motion, motion made by Mr. Cruzel, seconded by Mr. Grady. Any discussion? Sensing non roll call, please. Mr. Grady? Yes. Mr. Renier? Yes. Mrs. Riley? Yes. Mr. Cruzel? Yes. Mrs. Thurston? Yes. Chairman <coughs> Serrard? Yes. Motion passes. Kathy, could we include a copy of these changes into our minutes? Yes. Item 12 Board Committee Reports, Building Committee, Mr. Cruzel. So what I was trying to get at before, but uh, we, we did have a meeting last Thursday, but there wasn't a quorum, so we didn't have a meeting last Thursday. So, But while we were there, we found out that the AGC of Connecticut and in Industry Recognition Awards and Dinner nominees is this Thursday, and Randy Daigle from our committee, our committee chair, was nominated by Gil Bain to receive this award. So I wanted to give him recognition for, for a job well done, and he deserves deserves it. So, so that's this Thursday. He's gonna they're gonna have an awards dinner for that. So, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Grizel. Curriculum oh, committee. I have a, I have oh. a question. I, I don't know if this falls under the traffic light thing. What is what is what is the status on that? The la I spoke with uh, Representative Hall about that, and she was communicating with the town manager. And they were going to bring it up to council. Okay. So there was some communication. I saw her at the Isnuntuk ribbon cutting, and she, okay. they were going to. So it's not were, dead. It's not, not dead. dead. It's, it's still going. Working on it, but I going through the don't normal think state the, process. I don't think the budget problem, yeah. the budget yeah. mess, is not helping it either. So now is that going to be funded by the state, or is, I heard a rumor that the town might be. I don't know the particulars okay. to be honest. And right. again, thank you, Hartford. That's all, yeah. No, it's not a dead issue. It was something that had to be come through the council, and she was working on that or finding out about it. So I'll keep you posted if I hear more. Curriculum committee. Next Wednesday, yes. Scheduled for next Wednesday. Okay. Finance committee. Uh, we're, we had nothing this month, and, and we're not scheduled again till, till November or late, late October. Okay. Uh, August. Okay. No, October. What are you? 
October. Shoot me. Leadership committee. Um, we haven't convened yet, um, but I'm certain that we will have something going on before after November 1st, um, at least to start putting some ideas on the table. Uh, policy committee. We just had a report. Oh, but there's more. Go ahead. So we uh, we just completed the uh, zero series, uh, and our next meeting is next Wednesday, and we'll be working on the thousand series, gradually working our way up. Very good. Any other committees? Sensing none, moving on. Approval of the minutes, special meeting minutes, September 26, 2017. So Second. Motion made by Ms. Thurston, seconded by Mr. Cruzel. Any discussion, changes, or additions? Sensing none, approval of those minutes, show of hands. Any abstentions? One abstention. Motion passes. Approval of the council payroll, we have none. None. Correspondence and communications, we have none. Any further audiences? We have none. I'm going to set a record. <laughs> executive session. We have no need for an executive session. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> motion to adjourn made by Mr. Grady, seconded by Ms. Thurston. Any discussion? Show of hands. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks.